You guys, so this weekend I went to a traditional wedding, right? And we have this conversation all the time, but um, my mind just kind of went somewhere else <clears throat> regarding it. So we were obviously at this traditional wedding, you know, the girls had to basically dress traditional and the guys had to put on a white shirt. <laughs> um, and we were just talking about how unfair it is that, you know, like for a girl to get ready for an event takes so much more work than a guy. Like, guys, you know, they just wear they wear a suit or the same suit even, or like to the wedding, you know, you just kind of wear a white shirt and you put a little, you know, piece of cloth on or you put something on your head and, you know, you're fine, you're ready. Anyway, so what this got me thinking about was how, <clears throat> how we make decisions in our daily lives um, based on the experiences of other people. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So, um, I will explain that. So when I was little, went to the shop, stole something from the shop. My parents found out or my mom found out. She made me go back to the shop, return it, tell the owner that I stole it and, um, pay for it and not take it anywhere. Right. So, um, but I know other people who steal things, they get caught and it's like, ugh, you know, it's too much effort to go back to the store or whatever it is. Right. Um, so that's obviously like a really specific situation, but again, it, it still proves the, it stresses the point that, you know, what you are able to get away with, I'm not able to get away with. And that's kind of where my mind went. Um, or just as I was thinking about it and looking at some of the pictures today, to bring it maybe closer to home for all of us, you know. Um, so, again, I'm just going to use myself because I'm the easiest example. Um, Holy Spirit has become really picky, right, with me. So, like, I... <laughs> guys, it's a problem. So, um, you know, I walked past somebody the other day. I said something under my breath because they annoyed me. Um... When I got home, Holy Spirit was like, no, KD, that was unkind. I want you to apologize. I was like, look, you know, they didn't even hear me. They didn't. Now I'm going to be apologizing. At first, I'm going to have to explain. And he was like, look, it's unkind. So go and apologize. So went to the person, you know, had to explain the situation again, say, oh, this is what I said underneath. Um, and then like, just, you know, repent, ask for forgiveness and come back. And then, you know, we were kind of okay. And again there, I think a big part of my frustration was people do it all the time. I've been doing it all the time, right? I, me, like I have been doing it all the time and there's been nothing wrong with that. And now all of a sudden, like it's an issue. Um, but here, here's the deal. <laughs> okay. There is a cost to be paid, okay, or to be counted. We need to count the cost to following Jesus, okay? And as a believer... Um, the reason why we've started adding all these adjectives, right, to the word Christian, which just, ugh, anyway, um, but the reason why we've started adding all these adjectives is because we are trying to convince ourselves that the level that we're operating on is Christianity. So somebody else that's operating at a, a more serious or at a more dedicated or a more committed, whatever the word is, level, um, it's not that they are, um, it doesn't make, it doesn't mean I'm not doing Christianity properly. It just means that they are being a super Christian, you know, or they are being a mega Christian or they are being a, you know, whatever, all these words. When I mean, actually all they're doing is being a Christian. Um, and, and, and what it looks like is that for each of us on our different journeys, they are going to be, there's going to be a stage where something that used to be okay for you is no longer okay. Or, or which is the most frustrating part, is something that is okay for somebody else is not okay for you. Hey? And it is hella annoying, right? It is amazingly frustrating because you see people do it and you're just like, how come they're allowed to do it but I'm not, right? But again, that's the thing. It is, what is the cost that you are willing to pay for intimacy? Because intimacy has a cost, right? Um, we all get given, or we, we're all presented with this opportunity um, with the, of the gospel. We're all presented with this opportunity um, 
you know, to join God's family and to become a Christian. But we're not all doing it the same because, the, I mean, the only difference that you can really find there is intimacy, right? The, the closer I get to God, the more the more holiness he'll demand from me, right? That's what his call is, is be holy for I am holy. The more, the closer I get to him, the more I behold him, the more I look at him, the more I see him, the more sin starts to scratch at me and it's not okay. And it's, you know, I'm, oh, I just thought of another one, but you know, I, I will go there, but a bit later. Um, so it really, there's just, there's this, there's this picture around, there's this, there's a per perception that we have um, that frames the decisions that we make. And a lot of it is actually influenced by what other people are allowed to do versus what God is saying to us. No, the line is drawn here for you. Okay. And um, I'm actually going to, I think I should record it now before I forget and then I'll just post it later. Um, because a big part of that was or for me anyway, was a few years ago, I watched this teaching by Andy Stanley and he asks a question there and it changed my life. So I'll do that as a part two kind of to this video. But the bottom line is as follows. Just because it's okay for other people, it does not mean that it is okay for you. Okay. Holy Spirit might be asking them to make the same sacrifice, but they are choosing not to yield, right? So then what? So you're just going to be like, okay, well, because it's okay for them, it's going to be okay for me. I'm okay. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be happy with this relationship. Guys, it, hear me. I know. I understand. It is very frustrating because, you know, we want everything to be fair, you know. Um, but, like, we, I think when you realize that, the, that, that, the, that he's the reward, that the reward is that you get closer to him, that you are... You know, that, like that, that he pulls you in just a little bit more. When you, when, you, when you get to realize that that is the reward at the end of um, every act of obedience that you give or, you know, every time you yield to him, it just, it, it becomes, you know, the decision is easier. Then you're like, okay, fine. Yes, it's unfair, but I'll do this because I want to be closer to you. So, um, yeah. Uh, just because it's okay for other people doesn't mean it's okay for you. Um, and I really want to encourage you, like, as you feel the nudgings of Holy Spirit as you go through your daily life, you know, when he's saying, look, this is not okay for you. This is not okay for you. I don't want this for you. I don't want this for you. Yo, yield, yield to that as hard as it is, as frustrating as it is, um, as difficult and challenging as it sometimes is. Like, just remember that he is the reward, right? He is the reward, and if he's the reward, yo, it's worth it. It's just, it's so, it's so worth it. It's so worth it.